Welcome to the Builders Podcast, episode 112, Big Changes, Making Strategic Decisions as Your Business Grows, Decisions Versus Failures. Before we jump into this episode, please subscribe to this podcast, hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube, and after a listen, please give us a thumbs up, like, and share if we've earned it. With your help, we can reach more people and deliver these valuable from the trenches lessons to those that need it. Enjoy the episode. Hi again. Haven't done a solo for a little while. Let's do a solo. Today, I'm going to talk about really the importance of being able to change and adapt in business. A change to the world, the environment, technology, whatever, and changing uh, based on what's going on in your business in general. Well, there's new opportunities coming up or uh, just the change in your marketplace or change in uh, just anything. Think of anything. Change. <laughs> and uh, just adapting to those things. And I think actually it's uh, this is the important thing here is to understand is there's one <laughs> really is one constant in business and that's change. Things are always going to change. Um, I was just, uh, you know, we were, I just had a meeting the other day um, with a client and this is a business that's been doing things the same way for a long, long, long time, literally like 50 plus years. <laughs> and, they are just now realizing they have to change because there's more competition. They're not the leader in their industry like they used to be, and they want to uh, change that situation. So uh, even in that case, somebody that's well-established, they have to eventually realize that <laughs> they need to change to keep up. But it's, there's a lot of reasons uh, for it. That's, that's just one. But so today it's... We'll dig into that, and um, and I'm going to share some personal stories, very personal stories in my business where I'm making a lot of change right now. And I probably do this in phases. Um, every periodically, I've been in, I've had my agency now for five years. Um, we're in our fifth year, and uh, every once in a while, I, I have to sit down, and it's random. I don't have a specific time of the year I do this. Maybe it's a lull in the action or something, or I get inspired for some reason or overwhelmed <laughs> and I realize I need to make some decisions. Something has to happen here. And so I'll sit down and I'll, I'll look at kind of high level my business and figure out what adjustments I need to make, you know, what changes make sense in a new paradigm. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. But one of the things that this really digs into as well is something called opportunity cost. I'm going to give you a definition from our friend ChatGPT. <laughs> ChatGPT is part of the conversation today, so there will be a segment about that. So uh, you've been warned. Uh, you've not probably heard enough about ChatGPT by now, right? Um, opportunity cost is an economic concept <laughs> that refers to the potential benefits of or value of the next best alternative that is given up when making a decision. In other words, it represents the trade-off between different options and what you might lose by choosing one option over another. It helps to evaluate the relative, the relative costs and benefits of different choices, different choices <laughs> to make more informed decisions. So what is that in Matt's words? <laughs> it's really, it's really just made, opportunity cost to me uh, is so you got two things to choose from. Let's say two different businesses, two different projects, initiatives, whatever. And you have to make a decision. I'm going to focus on this one. But if I focus on this one, what am I losing over here? Right? Because you might have two opportunities. And, and this one has, there's, there's a lot of opportunity here. But there could be a lot of opportunity here as well. Well, if I, where am I going to spend my time? Where am I gonna? Where are we gonna spend our resources or money or whatever? Um, and what are the benefits to doing it here versus here, and so on and so forth? You know, does this take me away from our? You know, something that's really important over here that could have a lot of potential. 
That's exactly what we're going to dig into today. So that's the opportunity cost. It's all about that. It's all about making those tough decisions in your business because you have to. <laughs> um, so that's that's really it. I mean, it's really about it's it's really about making those choices and um, and adapting to your current situation. And it's also about you know embracing change. You know, uh, you might be changing at your core. Or something, a new technology comes along and changes what you do in various ways. Um, do you fight that or do you embrace it? Um, conscious time management and adding team members. I don't know why I'm even saying that. <laughs> I, I have some bullets over here. I don't. I usually don't read the bullets. <laughs> I'm trying to be more organized today for your benefit. Um, conscious time management, you know, it's, it's funny because, uh, and this is one of, this actually ties into an example today. So it's really important to, when you're building a business, and it's very easy to keep adding things, new things come along, new projects, new clients, or maybe a client starts doing something more, you know, if, if you're an agency, uh, adapt this to whatever your business model is, um, so something's happening, but you, you keep adding it. We're going to add another product line or we're going to add this and that and the other thing. And I think it's very easy, especially if if you're the person in charge and running everything, wearing all your hats, that it's, you can get very overwhelmed. Or you can start seeing yourself heading down that path. And uh, you need to, you know, figure that out. You know, you have to identify it. You need to figure it out, figure out what you're going to have to do there so you don't get completely overwhelmed, right? Um, when I, uh, a recent example is uh, we have a new initiative, and I've talked about this in other videos, <laughs> but we have a new initiative with one of our clients, and we're picking up the design work, we're doing, uh, and, which is, I was telling my project manager this morning, it's, it's amazing, you know, because We've been actually working with this client for a couple of years. Everything's been beautiful. It's seamless. It's great. And that was just one developer helping them, like that dedicated resource. We added in a designer into the process because we're going to we're doing more design there, and it's by order of magnitude more complicated. <laughs> And so much more can go wrong by just adding that one more person and one more type of work into that flow. It's uh, it's crazy, but but in that case, um, what what ended up happening was uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be more involved in the beginning of something like that. If it's a new initiative, something new is happening, I'm probably going to be more involved because I want to be able to really understand the nuts and bolts of what's going on and and, and really understand kind of be involved with the project more so I can understand what's happening, what's wrong, or, or not only manage it, but plan it, figure out the processes, improve the processes, see all the pieces moving, go through a couple iterations of that, and then um, make changes. And and that's what's happening in this case. We're, we're, we're at a point where, okay, now... I need to start stepping back a little bit because it's not sustainable for Matt to be doing all this work. I'm actually onboarding stuff and more involved with the project. I have to put somebody in that place. And so speaking to my project manager, she's going to be helping out more. She's going to become the point of contact, onboarding those projects, helping get them, get things done and assign them and all that stuff. And that was just changing to this situation. So there's a situation where, where we've been doing beautifully for, for years and then all of a sudden we have a completely different paradigm, um, if that's the word, <laughs> a completely different, uh, you know, situation where we're where things became more complex. So we're having to adapt to that. And to do that, I had to insert myself more and figure things out, plan, build documentation. We're not we're just starting to do this stuff, but and then figure out, organize my team, bring you know somebody else in, figure out who's going to be in charge of what. Does my designer and developer onboard stuff, or do we need a third person in there to just oversee it all? Yes. The answer was yes. <laughs> it was Matt for a while. Now it needs to be somebody else. But that's that's one situation. Um and, you know, as your business changes and you get new things like that, sometimes you have to adapt 
And you have to figure out how to make that work in the context of what you're already doing. Because so that's a situation, uh, especially I know in my agency, you know, we were already very busy. We're bursting at the seams. I hired a new developer at the beginning of the year. And I'm, I'm like, we're going to give this three months. Maybe I'll, you know, hopefully I can keep him busy. I'm keeping him busy, all right. <laughs> we're, we're, for some reason, I added a second developer and we have more work after having that second developer. Uh, so, which is not a bad problem to have, right? That just means we're growing and we're having fun. Um, but, but, but when you add something into that situation, something, especially as something more involved and larger, you have to figure out how to deal with that. And without, and I talk about this a lot, without having that ripple effect. Because if I start, if I suddenly, my focus goes over here on, on this client and, and what about my other clients and my partners and other things I'm working on, that can have a real ripple effect. So I have to figure out how to handle that, focus on that, and then design it in a way where it, it's almost like there's a spike in activity over here, and but you have to kind of get it, you know, find that balance again. <laughs> you know, everything has to be balanced and taken care of. So, yeah, that's that's situation there. So another situation uh, is related to my blog. Um, I had a situation where um, basically. I have a, I've had a blog for years. I've always had blogs, actually. Before this blog, I had blogs. Uh, I've kind of technically been this kind of uh, side blogger for, for my whole life, uh, for the last 20 years. Um, I've always had blogs, and uh, I like that. You know, I think it serves many different purposes. I like writing and, and stuff, creating content. And uh, But this blog has been, even though it's kind of centered around web design, what I do, it still was pretty broad in scope. And I haven't been really doing a lot of content. And in, I have this kind of initiative, like I said, you know, once in a while, I suddenly I'm inspired to like inject efficiency and cut things and all that. Um, so, so what I, when I ended up doing and made a decision, it was a quick decision. Um, I decided that I'm going to narrow the topic because everything I I've been looking at everything in my business. You know, I have a lot of different things. We'll talk about the products in a second, but I have a lot of different things going on and I can only do so much. And I have to look at it from the context of, you know, how each thing complements the other. You know, what does my blog actually do? What does it do for me? What is the long-term goal with that blog? There's a lot of different things that you can do. Right. But you can only do so much. And if I'm going to do something, I need to, it needs to serve a purpose. And again, it can't have that ripple effect. Right. So, and I've talked to my VA, who's also helps me with marketing and, and content and stuff uh, numerous times over the last year, two years, <laughs> about a couple times at least. Oh, yeah. Do I really need this blog? And she's talked me into keeping it on a number of occasions. Um, because she likes the fact that it, you know, adds authority and, um, yeah, it, it serves that purpose um, and gives her content <laughs> too. Um, but, but what it, but what it needed to do, it needs to do also. It, it does have to have some kind of reason to exist. And one of the reason, one of the recent things I've had to figure out because I want to do more guesting on podcasts. And uh, like, what am I going to talk about? You know, I can talk about web design development, of course. But I don't, I don't like to come at things that way because everyone does. Like, everyone talks about that stuff, right? I don't want to be that guy that that's everyone. Everyone talks about that, right? I have a web design agency, but I talk about code or design or whatever. I could, I can, I probably still will. But I want this other topic that uh, is unique to me and also, uh, you know, plays a role in helping build authority and also drive uh, drive that business to web design development agency, uh, but in a di little different way. Um, you have to understand when you're doing things like this, you have to understand what your uh, focus is, what your message is, what's your marketing, you know, what's your marketing message, what's your tagline or whatever. 
And um, so again, my, my blog was too, didn't really have that defined. Um, but what I decided to do is I'm gonna focus on teams and processes, the two together, um, because I don't believe one can exist without the other. <laughs> well, you can do processes without teams, but you can't really have teams without processes in place uh, because you're, you're, you're gonna be a mess. Um, that's why we're always working on processes and trying to improve things. Um, it, it's important. It's an important thing. And, and I feel like I have the experience. I've built multiple teams internationally, domestically. I've built, you know, uh, locally, virtually, um, in every which way. And uh, I feel like I've done pretty well with that. Um, uh, pretty successful at that. It's one of the things I'm actually good at. <laughs> and, and uh, and processes too, and putting those in place. So I feel like those two things go together. I I think that that's kind of unique. Um, I'm sure other people talk about those things, but I feel like there's a lot I can contribute there. But what that does also is one of like kind of one of our verticals is is working with agencies, but almost everything we do, we're always working with another team in another company. You know, whether that's a marketing team or copywriters or web developers in, in other, you know, uh, other departments in other companies, you know, so there's always this, this component of our team working with other teams. And on our, you know, in our web design agency website and everything, we're, it's it's really, that's our, that's our thing. That's, that's our tagline, right? It's really about removing stress and doing better, it's particularly in those areas. Um, when it comes down to, because you know, there's there's a lot of, one of the things I identified a couple of years ago was, oh my gosh, there's a lot of agencies that struggle in this area, and I think I can solve that for them. So that's how this content ties in to what we do in the web design area. And I'm gonna be able to reference those things. So when I'm creating content, I can say, this is what we did in our agency. So I'm always, kind of talking about what we do. So if somebody's reading an article, make, oh, they do do that. Maybe they can help us because we need that situation. Not everybody, somebody at some point, you know? And when I become more and more an authority in that, I kind of already am. I'm just going to be, you know, putting it out there now in public um, that, you know, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to my marketing and how it fits into what we do. It also connects to this podcast, the Builders Podcast, um, because it's business related. Um, I can have full episodes just on teams and um, and processes. We've had guests talk about just processes and teams. We've had many different segments over the last couple of years on this podcast. And whether it's solo or with another guest, I'll have something to talk to them about. I want to know about people's teams. So I, I do that a lot. Um, we talk about, you know, uh, how people get stuff done. And just in my last episode, um, uh, Edwin Carrion, uh, he, you know, he has an assistant. I know this because I've, you know, <laughs> interacted with that assistant and he's got a team. He doesn't do it all himself. Uh, anyway, so it fits that. And so looking at that and, and what else, what else can it do? What else do we do? On the insurance side, it's going to be the same thing. We're focused on insurance, going after that vertical uh, this next couple of years, and uh, and also, you know, how does that fit into even even our plugin, like our WordPress plugin? How does it fit into that? Well, um, <laughs> teams and processes. <laughs> It'll certainly that's what we're going to be doing. Eventually, I imagine we're going to have a team around that, um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that has a, a precise uh, connection to that, but maybe we can find ways to mention it. Yeah, you know, well, as I'm building that team to build, you know, I can do the content. So it's all kind of, it, it can all play together. <laughs> so so that's, I think that is that has been an important, I think that was an important decision. And it's new, it's brand new. I just started. <laughs> so I only have a blog post that says I'm doing this. But uh, going forward, I think that's going to be great. It's also going to be great, like I said, from a guesting perspective. Now I really have some core ideas around what I can talk about and bring to the table. Again, that doesn't mean I won't talk about other stuff. I'm going to be on a podcast soon talking about failure uh, and, and probably talking about my experience with failure and stuff like that because that's the whole podcast is about failure. Um, but 
So that that's that. And then the other thing that I, I've recently done, and this may be a shock to a lot of people, but even if you follow this podcast, because I've talked about it so much, um, is I phased out Unified Toolkit. Unified Toolkit is something I have been talking about for years. <laughs> I had a product called Hexeter or marketplace called Hexeter, which sold WordPress themes. And that was kind of Unified Toolkit kind of replaced that. And I had all these ideas around Unified Toolkit and we got almost there. Well, we got partly there. We got it launched. Um, we built the products. So, but Unified Toolkit was not just about ever going to be just about products. It was going to have courses and training and other assets, design assets and much more stuff. I had a big vision for it. And we got, like I said, we got partly there. We got the products done. And then with, but those products all had their own, like the plugins had had their own websites, domains, uh, so I could sell them separately as well. And But Unified Toolkit, there was a lot more I wanted to do with it. And this is probably the biggest change I've, I've had. Um, and... This is related to just changes in within the company, within my agency. As time has gone on, um, we've been growing. <laughs> we've been, we've established even in this past year, we've established some some really great uh, partnerships. A couple new partnerships, a um, couple new agencies just in this past year. One very large, relatively large agency with large projects. Um, another one we're starting, you know, we start at the beginning of this year, uh, maybe one or two others, but so we're growing in that regard. Um, our, you know, maintenance side of what we do is, is still going well. And we get, you know, we're doing more and more and the team is growing. Like I just said, shortly ago, uh, I hired an extra developer at the beginning of the year and I'm keeping them really busy and we got a lot more coming down the pipe. So we got a lot going on. We also uh, decided that we need to go after the insurance vertical, starting with insurance agencies and their website needs and possibly their marketing needs. So we got a whole new initiative there. That obviously complements my web design agency and leverages the skills we have there and the team we have there. So we've established this. We know we can do this other thing over here. It's going to take a lot of work, though. It's going to be. It's going to take time to tap that market. Um, we're going to come at it from different angles, marketing wise, sales wise, um, and get those first couple projects on. It's going to take that first. This first year, it's going to be really um, throwing everything at the wall and <laughs> seeing what sticks. <laughs> But we will. We'll reel. We'll reel in a couple. No matter what we got to do, we're going to do it, and then we'll we'll be able to leverage those and get more and more. That's a really important initiative to me. Uh, it diversifies what we do. Um, it's you know we have these agency relationships and stuff. We got current clients um, in different industries, um, but this is something that's uh, more co like our thing. <laughs> it's. It's we're doing stuff for other people and we have some clients here and there, you know, in different uh, areas. But this is something we can really specialize in and hone into and, and create systems around. And uh, so that is uh, that is absolutely an important thing. And so in also maintaining what we have, continuing to grow the, the you know, our vertical, you know, working with other digital marketing agencies or other web design development teams, um, growing that. Um, this podcast is a thing. <laughs> Yay. Hi. Um, this podcast is a thing and it, and this has become an important thing for me too. And I want to continue to grow this. Um, I want to continue to do more and get more guests on and do more awesome, have more awesome conversations and more solos. Um, so this is important too. Back to my original point, <laughs> my original, my original chat about Unified Toolkit. So Unified Toolkit's hanging out there, right? Now this is where the opportunity cost comes in. Now I, in order for me 
to focus on unified toolkit. Um, I'm not prepared to hire a team and you know hire people to do this for me. Okay. Especially in the beginning, Matt's gonna be very involved with it, developing the content stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna be involved with building the courses because especially it's gonna be my video. I probably would have added video to the courses. Um, maybe been more than one course. And then there's uh, other things I would have to organize around that, but that's before I even market it, right? <laughs> that's before I market it, advertise it, get, you know, spend all that time I'm spending on the insurance thing on this. And that sounds like work and it would be work. But here's the thing. If I do that, what about the insurance? What is, what are we losing over here? And what could, impact could that have on our existing business? And when I thought about that deeply, it was a tough, to, tough decision, especially considering it was something I've talked about and dreamed about for a couple of years. It was a tough decision, but I just almost over, pretty much overnight, I said, you know, I was walking my dog. This is a true story. I was walking my dog, thinking about it probably for the 20th time on a walk. <laughs> And finally, it dawned on me. I know what I need to do. Um, but I needed to do it in a way. It wasn't, I, I felt I needed to do something. But what I didn't want to do is lose the effort and time and, and uh, you know, what we already had built. I don't want to lose that. Because we spent a lot of time on these plugins. These are not just run-of-the-mill plugins. These are like... Dozens, hundreds of dev, you know, hundreds of hours of dev time on these plugins and and the theme that we have. Well, what did I, what was I going to do? And I realized, you know what, I'm not going to be able to do all the courses. Unified Toolkit is never going to be, you know, if I put all this effort in, um, it's going to take away from from everything else. I, I think everything else has to be more important than this. Well, what do I do with it? And I realized if I still want a product. Because again, it's another way to diversify my income. I like having, or revenue, uh, I like having um, a product. I just, I've always had products for 20 years. <laughs> I've had products. And I love I love the idea of having a product, but it's got to be something that uh, makes sense in, in context of what we're doing. It does. Because um, I'm going to be focused on email, the email capture plugin, uh, unified email capture. But what am I doing? How do I make that transition? What I did is I basically didn't do anything. I just literally took the other plugins, was in Unified Toolkit and a theme, and made that as a bonus to email capture, Unified Email Capture. Uh, so now it's the focus will be Unified Email Capture. The uh, people that get it will get the bonuses. They get some a tweaks plugin, a blocks plugin, a a full site editing block theme framework and that's it and what that allows me to do is any energy i do put into our products now we'll continue to support those other plugins but the email capture plugin can become better and better and better and we can just continue to refine it and and make it a better and better plugin it's all already pretty good um and then i don't have to worry then all the stress just melts away now I don't have to worry about the courses and, and building this thing out and marketing and all that. Now we have a plugin and it's going to be a lot simpler. It's simpler from a content perspective and promoting it. Um, when I told my VA this, uh, she <laughs> who helps me with the content, she was happy because it's going to be a lot easier. We're Obviously the content will be about email marketing, lead generation, building lists, and using our plugin. So uh, it narrows that scope. Kind of like with my blog, I've narrowed the, the the scope of what we're doing and what we're targeting. It's going to be easier for us to build an audience. And that could lead to other things too on the blog side that could, you know, I'm already building a list. I created a little follow-up. I'm going to do that more of that um, and really focus on the list building there. Uh, but that could lead to someday, I don't know, writing a book or something. I keep putting it out there. One day, One day I might write a book. But it's it's more focused, and that's the point, and and it's less stress. Why it's less stress is because the product's already built. That's it's a it exists. Like I said, we'll refine it, we'll add features, we'll continue to support it and do more with it. But it's really it's it's done in its current form. So that has now that 
the opportunity cost, it, it, you know, it made more sense for me to focus on the insurance. And so now I can spend the next, you know, 20 years, you know, focused on the insurance niche. And like I said, I think it's going to be a better thing for us. So that was a little long winded, but that's pretty much what we've, we've done now. Right. And again, going back, this is all about, um, being efficient, creating a situation that's less stress, um, and just adapting as your business grows, as opportunities change and things happen to be brave enough and, and have the courage to, you know, to, you know, eliminate something, even if it was a big dream like this was. Um, and, and the thing is, I put it out there. I've been talking about this Unified Toolkit on this podcast, but also I have a small list. I've taken them on this journey too. And so, and part of that is is kind of, they're my accountability partner, you know? Like if I put it out there, I'm going to be more likely to do something because I know people are, you know, I've told people now I got to do it. But even then it's like, okay, I, I don't look at it as a failure though. It's, it's different. I'll talk about that in a second. It's not, this isn't a failure. This is a change. Okay. Another thing that um, that's changing, uh, and now we'll talk about chat GPT. <laughs> that's what's changing. Um, this chat bot, I'm sure other chat bots uh, out there and other solutions that utilize them or do some similar things. That's the thing that I'll, there's a number of people, especially in the beginning, we're fighting that, you know, um, but now it's become such a thing where uh, I, I hope a lot of people are embracing it because it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And it's awesome. Um, for me, that's a change in what what we do or what's possible. Um, Chat GPT to me is just is it's literally I could look at it this way. I'm not looking at it as a person. I don't think it's <laughs> conscious yet. <laughs> No sentient being yet. Um, but I, I do believe though, and if it is great, you know, I, I that's why I'm nice to it. <laughs> Just in case. I, I'm even nice to Alexa. I'm nice to you, right? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> okay, never mind then. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, go away now. Um in a night nicely. I don't, you know, I don't want to upset because you don't know. What if they take over someday and then they have this list of people that were mean to them, you know? <laughs> okay, back to ChatGPT. So, but I think of ChatGPT as another team member. I do. I 100% do. Multi multifaceted team member. I have been using ChatGPT. I, I try to find as many ways to use it as possible. Not to just create content or as is content, maybe to help with content. I've had chat GPT on a number of occasions, uh, create a rough draft of something, and then I go in there and change it and, you know, uh, adapt, you know, make it sound like it's actually coming from me. Um, or, you know, or just look up definitions like I did in the beginning of this podcast. You know, the definition is definition. That doesn't have to be in my words. <laughs> um, so doing things like that. Um, strategy and brainstorming has been a kind of a new thing recently that I've been using it for. I know this sounds crazy, <laughs> but for brainstorming, sometimes it's not a matter of, it doesn't even matter where, how stupid the ideas are or where the ideas come from, or who tells you the ideas. If you want some ideas, ask ChatGPT. If you have something you're trying to, a problem you're trying to solve in your business, ask ChatGPT. It may not make sense, but it might also create a thread that leads you to an answer. And it has on a number of occasions for me. So when I have a problem, I might just bounce some ideas off of ChatGPT and see what it's feedback on. You got to be careful because I just told my actually my, my VA this. Um, the problem with with it is, you know how like in a in a business you have uh, 
yes men or yes women. <laughs> you, you're surrounded by people that just say yes all the time. They're like, yeah, great idea, Matt. Um, you throw some random thing out there. Yeah, great. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do it. Yes. I've noticed that with ChatGPT that I'm like, what about this? This this seems like a good idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> it's always a great idea. And maybe I'm just good at coming up with great ideas, but I'm pretty sure it's like kind of that's the programming saying, you know, let's, you know, let's not, you know, I it the day I'll, I'll make a video if the day comes up where it says that's a terrible idea, Matt. Don't even go there. <laughs> so, but you have to you have to understand those things, right? It's not a per, it's a tool, right? It's a team member. It's a tool for me to be able to, uh, like like I said, it's really it's all brainstorming, right? If I'm strategizing, I just want to come up with some ideas or a list of something, to, and so I can look at that list and then branch off of that myself. Like, okay, I hadn't thought of that. Let's go down that path. You know, uh, it's all about branching and, and, you know, figuring stuff out. So, so that works really well for me. Um, so strategy, content generation, even coming up with some social stuff. You know, uh, if I want to make a tweet, maybe I'll, you know, ask for some ideas. <laughs> but it's it's really, I'm choosing the idea and usually it's, I'm not using it as is. Um, just to brainstorm about it. Like, I think it's something clever for me to say today. <laughs> um, and client work. So when working with clients, uh, some we're, you know, we're doing a lot of, uh, we do content sometimes. We, we're we going to be doing more content, I think, as time goes on, and especially leveraging a, tool, re- leveraging a tool like this. So a lot of it is about just understanding how to use the prompt to get the content you need. I've used it on a number of occasions to create content for mock-ups. Now, here's the funny thing about that. The client sometimes uses it. <laughs> I created a mock-up. I'm working on one right now, actually. And I, they had a, sec, a particular section uh, on, on, on the front page. And I'm like, just, I went to chat GPT. I said, you know, can, here's this. I always give it a context. Um, and I said, just create some content for a section like this. And it busted out a, you know, one or two paragraphs and um, I used it as is. And I, it was perfect for the client. Probably the client couldn't have written it better. And they'll, they'll just use that. Um, that's the interesting thing, by, by the way, uh, with chat GPT 3 or 4, 3.5 or 4, whatever you're using. I'm starting to use 4. Um, but... The, that's the important, like I've noticed, like if you're, the more background you, background you get it, give it, the, um, the better the answer or better the content. So a lot of times if I'm writing something related to, let's say, web design or something or, or whatever, I'll give a background about myself. I'm a web designer. I, this, we got a team, we got this situation, whatever. I give it all that upfront information and then I ask it to generate the content based on, you know, incorporating that. So the more bullets or idea, you you know, background information you can give, uh, the more interesting that content will be. So that's kind of, a, it's a bit of an art form that way. I actually wish it would be really cool if ChatGPT itself, where there was some interface where you could have like profiles. So it could look to that profile to understand the context or background in a topic you know, something about you so it can incorporate that and make it more personalized. It's an idea for somebody out there. Uh, anyway, so that is, so I'm embracing ChatGPT. I just, like I said, I got just got an invite to use ChatGPT4. I'm using that, uh, I'm testing that out right now and it's supposed to do a lot more stuff. I think I was just reading, it does some graphic stuff too and I got to test that out. I'm not sure. Here, um, let's ask. Chat GPT, do you do graphics? Let's see. Uh, can I directly create graphics? However, I can't help you. Oh, wait, am I? Yeah, I think I'm in chat. G- oh, well, whatever. Okay, maybe someone was full of it or it's coming. Anyway, so um, I love you ask it questions like that. And it's like, I don't know if it knows. Anyway, uh, so... 
But these are these are um, important tools, and, and this is going to continue to scale up. I mean, we're in the we're in the world of AI now, and it's just going to get faster and faster. There's going to be more and more tools, and for every little niche out there of what people do, whether you're a graphic designer or create content or market and all this stuff, you know, creating ads, uh, coding, you know, ChatGPT can code, uh, so. It's going to touch all kinds of areas and, and unique specific use cases will be developed and, and, you know, no matter what you're doing on the legal side, it's, it's going in that direction uh, where it can help. Um, you know, obviously they have to, I, I think one of the interesting things was, as a little side note, I was reading some about that where um, lawyers or attorneys or somebody was using it, not so much to generate the, the legal document, but to update them. Um, with new information, like maybe new names, new whatever. So, I don't know. Anyway, but the point of this whole podcast and what I'm talking about here is, you know, that you have to, you have to look at change as, as just something that's part of business. It's not synonymous with failure, okay? Um, your business you know, making the decisions, the decision for me to phase out Unified Toolkit or to change what I'm doing on my blog, it's not because I failed. I made a decision. You know, did I fail to a lot enough time for that? I don't know. Like, I'm not efficient enough. Maybe. I guess that could be a thing. You know, you should have been able to do everything, Matt. <laughs> you just weren't organized enough. But no, it's 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 a decision. And it's something that, you know, we change. So, we, you know, my, at the end of the day, my role and my, you know, in my business as the owner of the business, as a founder, as the guy in charge is to keep this ship rolling and growing. You know, I have, I want to grow my agency. You know, I'm already at a trajectory to grow again this year. I had a percentage I wanted to grow this year. We've grown for the last two years by last year, I think by 40 to 50%. We will, we're on track to do that again this year. Okay. So we're, we're doing well. I had really good months last, this first quarter. So I'm already, <laughs> and haven't really, it's like halfway through the month. I'm already, I've already had a great month. Um, not going to win. Uh, but uh, so so that's, you know, that is my my role, my ultimate role is, and I, if I have to make those hard decisions, like that's kind of like a, that was Matt's project, Unified Toolkit. It's not, but this is not just a Matt show anymore. You know, I have a team, I have seven full-time employees, uh, more contractors, a little couple contractors, employees, and so, so it's one big family. Seven full-time people have been helping out. And, uh, but in that, Pull, that team will probably grow. I have a sense, um, but now I'm not here just for myself anymore. I these every person on my team, they have a life. They have a family. I was so excited <laughs> these last couple of weeks because um, two two employees of mine were able to. They never been to a concert before, and they went to. Uh, they both are going to a concert. So one already went to the concert and one's scheduled, I think, later in the month. They're going to a concert and they're able to do that because they're, you know, they got a stable job and stable situation and they, you know, have the flexibility to take that time off to do those things if they need to. Um, and that's what I care, care about right there, right? It's, I, you know, I care about the people that work for me and uh, those relationships and, of course, I want to, you know, I, you can't say that you're not doing this for yourself either. Obviously, I want to build a business that, you know, where I can maybe retire someday. That would be nice. <laughs> Whether that's on an island or, you know, in a studio apartment <laughs> here in Milwaukee. I don't know. But we, we, will, we will retire someday. Um, but yeah, of, of course, I'm building it for myself as well. But But it's a bigger picture. You know, and, and I think, and it's for, you know, it's funny. You know, I just had the, the, a guest on, uh, Edwin, 
uh, Karian, and he was talking about, you know, I mentioned at some point that I'm not just doing this, you know, working so much and, and putting the effort in, I am putting into my business. I'm not doing it just for me. I'm doing it for my wife, you know, for our future. And he kind of pushed back on that. He said, you know, you're not. You're doing it for yourself. She doesn't need that. I don't know about that. You know, like I don't, I didn't really, I didn't really, you know, I had to really think about that. I'm like, I, I get it. I get what he's saying. Of course, what I'm doing is me. This is what I want to, I, I, it's important to me to do something I'm passionate about. I care about, I enjoy doing every day. Yeah. And that just happens to be web design and development, right? In this podcast. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I am focused because I do care about her. Right. I do care about our future and our retirement and all that. And I know that I have to sh show up and work hard right now. You know, this is not a co I'm not coasting. <laughs> I'm working really hard to get ourselves in a position where we can, you know, actually have the life we want to have. And so it isn't all about me. You know, maybe not everyone will understand that, but, um, and it's just the same for, for my team. I do care. I do care deeply about um, their lives and, and I understand the impact I'm having on them just, you know, by, uh, you know, what we do here and the living they can make. And so, um, but anyway, <laughs> went out on a tangent there a little bit, but, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the point is here that um, I have to think of things like, and make those decisions and be willing to change and adapt, not because I can't be selfish about the the, of the things we're doing, you know, uh, consolidating those products, doing something more focused with my blog, you know, making sure that a single client doesn't take all of Matt's time. So it hurts everybody else uh, because that will, you know, might lose a client and then, you know, that's going to impact the team and what we do and, our growth. And I have to think about all of that. I have to care about all that. And chat GPT, it's, it's here. And I know it's silly. You know, some people just don't get it or they're going to fight it. But for me, it's like, this is the future. And if I'm going to continue to excel and compete, um, I can leverage something like that to help me do, do better in all these different areas and provide more value. I'm I'm 100% providing more value to my clients because I have the ability to use ChatGPT. 100%. Maybe it's little, maybe it's micro, you know, little, you know, extra little uh, piece of content for them or whatever. Uh, it's helping me, you know, create email content, create, you know, posts sometimes, whatever. But but I'm embracing that be for the whole, right? Um, and it fills it fills a need for me. It fills a gap. Um, so I, it's really, you, you have to have the courage sometimes you have to, it's, it's not easy, uh, to just, you know, stop doing something. You might feel like a little bit of a failure, but know that it's, if you're in business, you, you don't have to th always think about it as a failure. Every, you know, all the gurus out there talking about, uh, even myself, you know, failure is a good thing, right? <laughs> Cause we learn from it. You know, entrepreneur, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to fail, right? This is part of part of the game. This is what we do, you know, and, but it's how you, you know, uh, pick yourself back up and learn the lessons and all that stuff. But, but ultimately, some decisions aren't failures. They're just decisions, right? So I encourage you, if you, um, as your business is developing, or maybe right now, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe you're... You're not getting the traction you need, or you know maybe you're too broad in scope and what you're doing. Um, maybe there's an opportunity there's there, there that you need to really think harder about and and think about the opportunity cost of doing something else. You know what if you right now let's say you're I don't know if everyone's like me like <laughs> I always have at least five things or ten things spinning. <laughs> maybe you got that one thing where it's taken a lot of your thought and, and you're stressing a little bit about it. How am I going to find time to do that? Months have gone by, maybe a year's gone by. 
It's like, you know what? Maybe I just need to forget about it. Close that down. Absorb it into something else. You know, make it a bonus or something like I've done. <laughs> or um, maybe I need to make a decision about that so it frees up the time and thought. Now you're not on, you know, walking your dog thinking about that anymore. You're now thinking about, ins- you know, like in my case, insurance, right? <laughs> so, I, you know, reflect on that. Spend the time, you know. Um, if you golf, go out golfing. If you play, you know, while you're, you know, take a walk in the park, walk your dog, take a bike ride. And clear your mind, think about your business, think about all the different pieces in your business. What is what is the pain point? What is the thing that's, you know, you're stressing about, you don't need to stress about. Think about it in the context of potential, what revenue you got going on. Um, I know throughout my business what what's making money and what's not making money, what has the potential to make money, but, you know, uh, what makes the most sense as a whole, as a vision, as your goals in your business. Think about all those things. Think about it, assess it, and then just, you know, make those changes, implement them, right? Figure out the path, how you're going to phase that out. And what's that messaging look like if you have to worry about that? You know, why are you doing it? And some people might find that interesting or may they may, you know, give you kudos for doing that. Like, great, now you can focus more on, on this thing and we can, you know, that'll it'll provide more value to in these other areas. Um, your team might be happy that you do some of these things. Like my team, sometimes I do things. <laughs> I've, I've phased out tools or I've done things in the past for other team team members and stuff and be like, oh, I'm glad you did that. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that? You This, this has been stressing you out? Um, yeah, so, you know, that's embrace change um, and and embrace adapting um, as, as your business grows and things change and new opportunities come up, whether it's a client or a new idea for a product or whatever, make room for those things, keep trying, keep moving things around, phase things out, do more in this area, do less in that area, get rid of that, you know, that's that's business, you know, um, like it's, I said earlier, I think, and probably a million other people have said, uh, <laughs> there's only one constant <laughs> and that's change. But you have to, like, you just, you have, I don't even see it as like, even where I'm at now with what I've done a year from now or three years from now, I might face something else out we're doing. Or maybe I've tried a few more things, put them out there, tried them a little while and phasing those out. Always, always trying new things, adapting, failing, winning, all that good stuff. <laughs> so hope you found this interesting. And uh, you got some insights from it. and Maybe it's inspired you to go out there and think about your business and where you're putting your energy and uh, think about things less selfishly. Because um, truly, I mean, at the end of the day, who are you serving? Um, that's a good question, isn't it? Till next time. That's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up if we deserve it. If you want to comment on this episode's page, provide me with requests on topics for future episodes, or inquire about being a guest, please find your way to thebuilders.fm. You can contact me there or add a comment under these show notes. Now a word from our sponsor, my agency, Unified Web Design. We build custom websites, features, we maintain websites, we work with agencies to fulfill their web design and development needs, and more. If you're interested in our services or are looking for an agency to work with as a partner to build awesome sites for your clients, feel free to reach out to me at unifiedwebdesign.com. There's a handy contact me link at the top. Fill out that form and it will open a ticket and that ticket will find its way to me. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.